Today we're going to learn how to multiply rational numbers. We need to start with some terminology that you need to know in order to be able to um, understand how to multiply rational numbers. First, let's start with a mixed number. A mixed number is a number um, composed of an integer and a fraction. For instance, 3 and 4 sevenths is a mixed number. Or if I said uh, negative, excuse me, negative 2 and 2 ninths would also be a mixed number. Improper fractions. An improper fraction is a fraction in which the numerator is larger than the denominator. Now remember, your numerator is your top number and your denominator is your bottom number in a fraction. So when the numerator is larger, for instance, in 11 fifths, um, the numerator in this case is larger, um, this is called an improper fraction. It would be improper for a five-year-old to try to carry an 11-year-old child, if you want to think of it that way. If I have 11 grocery bags in the back of my car, um, I can only carry five into the house at a time. I can change this improper fraction back into a mixed number, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But if I can take five grocery bags into the house at a time, then I would have to carry five in the house, and I'd go back out to the car. There would be five more there. I could carry those into the house. So I carry two full loads into the house, and when I get back to the car, there's only one bag left out of a load of five that I can carry. So I can change 11 fifths back into two and a fifth by dividing 11 by five. 11 divided by five is two with one left over out of five. And that changes this improper fraction into a mixed number. Reciprocal. A reciprocal is a fraction flipped. So I have two thirds, and if I want to um, find the reciprocal of it, I'm just simply going to take the denominator, put it on top as my numerator, and the numerator I'm going to put on the bottom as my denominator. So let's get real. When are we ever in life going to multiply rational numbers? Well, when um, you are a little bit older, or some of you might even like to cook now, but you might have to convert a recipe because you need to make enough for your whole family at Thanksgiving um, rather than just your family of four in your house. Um, so to convert that, you're going to have to be able to multiply those fractions and um, get uh, the, the correct amount, the correct quantity of flour or sugar or whatever it is that you're trying to figure out that you need to put into the recipe. Um, when you're buying an item, say that I'm buying... Um, 10 American Girl dolls that cost uh, $186.45 for all of my nieces and, um, and my, my girls, then I would need to be able to multiply that decimal um, times 10. Um, if I am calculating coupons um, or calculating a percentage off, if I go into a store and there's 60% off of a dress that I love and it costs $123 and um, 95 cent, I need to be able to figure out what 60% off. So I'm going to have to turn 60% back into a decimal number and then multiply those. Multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. Okay, let's take a look at the steps that we need to use to multiply um, fractions and mixed numbers. Well, first of all, when you come um, to the classroom, we'll practice this some, but I want to teach you this chant, and this chant's going to help you to be able to um, multiply fractions and mixed numbers and divide them. It has the rules for both division and multiplication in it. It goes like this. It goes, multiply, divide, change mix to improper, and it's improper to pick your ear, and that's why I'm doing this, yuck. Um, top and bottom, simplify, divide, stay, switch, flip. Okay, so when you multiply and divide fractions, you want to change mixed numbers, mix it up, to improper fractions. Top and bottom simplify, so you're going to simplify your top, your numerators, and your denominators. Um, you're going to see if there's a common factor and simplify it. And then when you divide, you stay, switch, flip. But we're not worrying about that last step right now, okay? So let's take a look at the steps up here. Written out in your notes, it's going to look like this. If you have a mixed number... I want you to use B, B, and T to convert it to an improper fraction. So you're going to change mixed numbers to improper. So let's take three and two-thirds 
which is a mixed number, and let's change it into an improper fraction. B, B, and T means bottom number times your big number plus your top number. Bottom times big, which is 3 times 3 is 9, plus your top, which is plus 2, so 9 plus 2 is 11. And your denominator just stays the same, 11 thirds. Bottom times big plus top, so change mix to improper. Top and bottom simplify, so we're going to look at our top numbers, our numerators, and our denominators, see if we can simplify, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. And then multiply the numerators and denominators. You'll just multiply straight across after you've simplified. It's really easy. So let's take a look here. 1 and 5, 6 times 4 and a half. 1 and 5, 6 times 4 and a half. So I am going to um, change my mixed numbers into improper fractions. So I have 1 and 5, 6. So B, B, and T, bottom times big plus top. I'm going to do the same here. Bottom times the big number plus the top number. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11. And then my denominator stays the same. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. And my denominator stays the same. Now, I would just multiple, multiply straight across, but there's one step that'll save you some time in the end, and that's to simplify. I want to show you that 11 six times 9 halves is the exact same as 11 times 9 over 6 times 2. These are the same. This is 11 six times 9 halves, and this is 11 six times 9 halves. I just put the 9 in parentheses and the 2 in parentheses right next to each other on the same line. Now I can look at top and down and the bottom, and I'm just simply looking to see if there are common factors between 11 and any numbers in my denominator spot. So 11 and 6 do not have common factors, neither do 11 and 2. They have a common factor of 1. They're relatively prime, so I'm not going to be able to reduce them or simplify them. But 9 and 6 have a common factor. They have 3. So in this case, I could say 3 goes into 6 twice, and 3 goes into 9 three times. So I'm going to simplify. Now, you don't have to write it out like this in the red, but I just want you to realize that these are the same. I could have done the same over here. I could have said 3 goes into 6 twice, 3 goes into 9 three times. Okay, I'm going to multiply straight across. 11 times 3 is 33. I would have gotten the same thing over here in the blue. 11 times 3 is 33. And then 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. So 33 fourths. All right, that is an improper fraction. So I need to turn that back into a mixed number since that is an improper fraction. So 33 fourths, I want to think about that in terms of bag of groceries. I have 33 bags of groceries in the back of my car and I can only carry four in at a time. That's all that my muscles can take. So if I go to the back of my car and I grab four bags and I take them into my kitchen, how many full loads of groceries am I going to take into my kitchen? How many groups of four am I taking into my kitchen? I'm going to take I'm going to take eight full loads of groceries into my kitchen. So eight times four is thirty-two, and I will have one more bag left in my car out of a full load of four. So eight and a fourth is my mixed number. Let's try it. Two and two thirds times one and a fourth. Bottom times big plus top. When you multiply and divide, you got to change mixed numbers to improper. So B, B, and T, three times two plus two. This is six plus two more is eight thirds times, again, bottom times big plus top. 
Four times one plus one. Four times one is four, plus one more is five. So I end up with five fourths. And then I'm gonna top and bottom simplify. Top and bottom simplify. I'm looking to see if my numerators and denominators share a common factor. I see that four and eight both share the factor four. Four goes into four once, four goes into eight twice. Two times five is 10. Three times one is three, so I get 10 thirds, which is improper. The bottom number tells me how many is in a whole. So I can carry three loads of groceries into the house in this case, and I have 10 bags in the back of my car. So how many full loads am I gonna take into the house? I can take three full loads of groceries, and I have one bag left over out of a full load of three that I carry on my last trip. I am making a new cookie recipe, and it is supposed to make 48 cookies. I want to make one and a half times as many. My original recipe called for two and a fourth cups of flour. To make one and a half times as many cookies, how much flour do I need now? Well, my original recipe called for two and a fourth cups of flour. So I'm simply going to take two and a fourth cups and multiply it by one and a half times. I have two mixed numbers here, so I'm going to change mixed to improper. Bottom times big plus top, that's nine fourths. Bottom times big plus top, that's three halves. All right, at this point, I'm going to top and bottom simplify if I can. I'm looking to see if there are any common factors here. And I don't see any on top and on bottom, too. So I'm going to multiply straight across. 9 times 3 is 27. 4 times 2 is 8. And I end up with an improper fraction. Now I'm going to take that improper fraction, change it back into a mixed number. Um, I can carry eight bags of groceries into my house in this case. There's 27 in my car. So how many groups of, um, of eight can I carry in? How many full loads am I going to be able to carry into the house? Well, three full loads because eight times three is 24. And I will have three bags left over because 24 plus three is 27. So three and three eighths is my final answer. Okay, let's take a look at how to multiply decimal numbers. Some of the steps in multiplying a decimal number. Well, we are going to multiply as if the decimals were not even there. So you're just going to take the two numbers and multiply them and ignore the decimals. You're going to count how many decimal, uh, how many numbers are to the right of the decimal. And then you're going to place the decimal point in, in your answer with the same amount of numbers to the right. Okay, so we're going to count decimal places, um, place value spots, and we're going to move the decimal on um, that many place value spots uh, back into our answer. Okay, I am multiplying this. Um, I'm going to do, let's try out 1 and 34 hundredths in 9 and 8 tenths, and we're going to multiply these two numbers. We're going to use lattice to multiply, which I know is a method many of you have seen in the past. For those of you who have never seen lattice, listen closely. Um, I will show you the traditional way of multiplying in our next example, but uh, for those of you who like lattice, I want you to know you are welcome to use it. You can use the traditional method if you want to. The traditional method would just look like this, 1 and 3,400 times 9 and 8 tenths. That's the traditional way that we multiply. We're going to do it this way, though. All right, in lattice method, you can pick a box to start in. So we're going to start here where the 4 and the 9 meet. 4 times 9 is 36. Up top, because this is our, um, where we put our tens, and uh, we're going to put our ones in, in the bottom of the triangle. So we have a three and a six here. Four times eight, this is where the four and the eight meet, is this box right here. And four times eight is 32, so I'm going to put my three in the top box and my two in the bottom. Three times nine is 27. I'll put my two here and my seven here. I can go down here 
to the um, to the end if I want to. I can, I can move to any box I want to start in. I can go over here to one and eight where the one and the eight meet, which is eight. One and the nine meet, that's nine. Three and eight, it's 24. Okay, and I have these diagonals. Putting my tens and my ones up. I'm gonna just simply add right there my diagonals. So I get two. Four plus six is 10 plus three is 13. Eight plus two is 10 plus seven is 17. Plus three more is 20 plus one more is 21. Nine plus two is 11 plus two more is 13. And then I carry one over here. I'm just going to bring that one straight down because zero plus one is just one. Okay, I have um, one place value spot here and I have two in um, one in 3,400. So two plus one is three. And I'm going to move my decimal one, two, three places where I get 13 and 132 thousandths. for my answer. Okay, let's try it. Two and 66 hundredths times one and 25 hundredths. Um, you're welcome to use lattice if you want to. I am going to um, use the traditional method so you can see it that way also. Five times six is 30. Again, we get 30, um, plus three is 33. Five and two is 10, plus three is 13. Okay, got a hold place, place value spot here because we're moving to tens. Uh, two times six is 12. 12 and one is 13. And two times two is four, plus one more is five. And I'm holding two place value spots because we're moving to hundreds. And one times everything up there is going to be just that other number. So six, six, and two. I'm going to add it all up. And now I'm just going to simply move my decimal to where it needs to go. There are two place value spots up top, and there are two place value spots on our bottom number. So altogether, I have four place value spots. I need to move the decimal. One, two, three, four. So I get three and three hundred twenty-five thousandths. Let's look at our um, our word story. My favorite drink at Starbucks cost me $2.73. I just found out that the price will be increasing one in 66 hundredths times this amount. With this increase, how much will I be spending now? Okay, so in using lattice, it, um, it looks like $2.73 times $1.66. I separated each numeral that is vertical over here on the side. With that blue, with the blue line, um, a horizontal blue line, and then I separate it, um, my number across the top with vertical blue line, 2.73 times 1.66. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick a box to start in. I can start in any box I want to. Um, two times six is 12. Seven times six. 42, three times six is 18, six times three again, 18, seven times six, again, 42, six times two is 12, and then one times everything is just going to be the other number. One times three is three, one times seven is seven, and one times two is two. And I just am going to go down these black lines right here, the diagonal lines, and add 
I get 8. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 more is 11. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. Plus 2 more is 10, plus 3 is 13. 7 plus 2 plus 1 is 10, plus 4 is 14, plus 1 is 15. And then 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 1 more is 4. And that's just a 0. So I have um, four place value spots because there's one, two here, and then one, two, and um, the one is 6,600. So I'm going to move my decimal. One, two, three, four place value spots. And I get 4.5. So what does that mean for the cost? Okay, now I want you to pause um, your, your video. And I want you to go ahead and try these out using the um, rules and the steps that we have uh, from earlier on in the video. Three and a fourth times two and a half. When we multiply, we want to change mixed to improper, bottom times big plus top. That's 12. Four times three is 12 plus one is 13 fourths times bottom times big plus top. Two times two is four plus one is five. And then I'm going to just multiply straight across. Five times 13. Well, five times 10 is 50 and five times three is 15. So if I put 50 and 15 together, that's 65. Four times two is eight. 65 eighths is an improper fraction, so I need to change that back into a mixed number. If I went grocery shopping and I have 65 bags of groceries and I can only carry eight at a time, how many loads, full loads, can I take into the house? Well, I can take eight full loads of groceries into the house because eight times eight is 64, and I'll have one bag left out of eight. So eight full loads and one more bag left to bring into the house. Number two, 350 times 275. I have two choices here. I can use lattice or I can use traditional multiplication. So I'm going to choose traditional for this one. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply five times zero, five times five. 25, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 2 is 17. Put a 0 in the 1's place because I'm moving 1 to the 10's. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3 is 21, plus 3 more is 24. And I'm going to put two zeros in. I'm moving on to the 100's place. If, if I'm ignoring the decimal, I'm moving into the hundreds place. So um, 2 times 0, 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 more is 7. I add it all up. And I end up um, with... Uh, 96,250 before I put my decimal in. Now I've got to count decimal places. There's two um, place value spots up top. There's two down below. One, two. And all together there's four. So I have to count one, two, three, four. So my answer is nine and six hundred. 25 thousandths. Okay, number three. One and 33 hundredths times four and 66 hundredths. Okay. 
I'm going to use lattice for this one. Let's choose a box to start in. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 consists of 110 and 2 ones. So I'm going to put my 110 in the top triangle and my 2 ones in the bottom. 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 3 again, 18. 6 times 3, 18. 6 times 3 is 18. And 3 times 4 is 12. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 6 is 6. And 1 times 6 again is 6. And I'm just going to add up my diagonals. So here I have 8. 8 and 8, 16 plus 1 is 17. 8 and 2 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 2 more is 18, plus 1 more is 19. 6 plus uh, 2 is 8, plus 2 more is 10, plus 1 more is 11. 4 plus 1 plus 1 is going to be 6. And I have two place value spots here and two place value spots here. So that's four all together. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four. And I end up with six and 1,978 ten thousandths. Number four. Number four says, Two and five sixths times one and a third. So let's take a look at what we have to do for this one. Again, we have a mixed number, so we're going to change it into an improper fraction. Change mixed to improper. All right, so six times two is 12, plus five, bottom times big plus top, plus five is 17. Um, three times one is three, plus one is four. And I'm going to top and bottom simplify if I can. So I'm looking at my top numbers and my bottom numbers to see if they have any common factors. Well, 4 and 6 both have a common factor of 2. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 times 17 is 34. 3 times 3 is 9. So now I have 34 ninths, which is an improper fraction. I need to change it to a mixed number. I know that 9 goes into 34 three times. 3 times 9 is 27. 27, I need to count up 7 more to get to 34. So um, there would be 7 left over out of 9. 3 and 7 ninths. 